Let's play a little game. I'm gonna make a timeline of all the Star Wars games from 1990 to the late 2010s and see if you can spot any trends in the amount of quality Star Wars games that came out over these three decades. And why start from the 90s? Well, I wasn't around pre-90s, I was born in 90. And those games from the 80s look pretty shit. And I'm only gonna count the games that were somewhat acclaimed, either for their greatness or their shittiness. Also, I'm not gonna count mobile, portable, or LEGO games. Even though the LEGO games aren't completely awful, most LEGO games are the damn same thing with a different coat of paint. Okay, let's start. 1992. Oh shit, where's my timeline? 1992. Super Star Wars for the Super Duper Nintendo. 1993, you got Super Star Wars Empire Strikes Back and X-Wing. 1994, you got Super Return of the Jedi and TIE Fighter, which is X-Wing except TIE Fighter. All right, Vito, you got two options. You want the soup of the day or do you want the soup du jour? It's the same fucking thing. The 1995 fucking legendary game came out called Dark Forces, which is a first person shooter inspired by some Doom mods. It's fucking great, and it spawned one of the greatest Star Wars characters of all time, Kyle Katarn. 1996, Shadows of the Empire comes out for N64 and eventually PC. 1997, Dark Forces 2 comes out, X Wing vs. TIE Fighter, and the greatest Star Wars game of all time. Masters of Taraskasi. Darth Vader versus Or. Ready? Fight! <laughs> In 98, you got another Jedi Knight game, Mysteries of the Sith, the first Rogue Squadron game, and that Star Wars arcade game that no one could fucking beat, but you fed your quarters to it all the time at the movie theaters. And in 1999, the year that The Phantom Menace was released, ushering in a whole new generation of Star Wars video games. Episode 1, The Phantom Menace for PlayStation and PC came out 20 days before the film, which I always thought was really strange, as well as Episode 1 Racer, X-Wing Alliance, and the second greatest Star Wars game of all time, Star Wars Pit Droids. And then we get the Y2K bug. Year 2000, we got Jedi Power Battles and Demolition. Now this is definitely one of the weaker years in all of Star Wars games, even though I have a soft spot for Jedi Power Battles. It's fucking hard as shit, but so fun. Hey, wait a second. In 2001, you got Starfighter, Rogue Squadron 2, and Galactic Battlegrounds, the first real Star Wars RTS game. And then the year 2002, you had Star Wars Bounty Hunter and holy shit, Jedi Outcast. Then in 2003, you've got probably the best year for Star Wars games ever. You've got Rogue Squadron 3, Star Wars Galaxies, Knights of the Old Republic, and Jedi Knight Jedi Academy. Holy fuck, it's the best game ever. And then it doesn't even stop there. 2004, you got Battlefront and Knights of the Old Republic 2. And in 2005, Battlefront 2 and Republic Commando. 2006, Empire at War and the Star Wars Best of PC pack, which came with Battlefront, Empire at War, Jedi Outcast, Knights of the Old Republic, Republic Commando, and a trial for Star Wars Galaxies. In 2007, this is the year without a hit Star Wars game in a while, unless you count Lego Star Wars, which I don't. So... And in 2008, you got The Force Unleashed, which was okay, I guess. 2009, the second year without any significant Star Wars games. As you can see, the number of Star Wars games starts to dwindle at this point, since it's been four years since the last Star Wars film was released. Then we get to 2010. We got Force Unleashed 2. Then in 2011, The Old Republic is released, Star Wars Galaxies dies, and a Darth Maul game called Battle of Sith Lords is canceled by George Lucas. And then 2012, fucking nothing. But Star Wars 1313 is announced, and it's a Boba Fett game. And then later in 2012, Disney acquires Lucasfilm and the rights to Star Wars. 2013, 1313's canceled. And it's revealed that the Darth Maul game that was canceled was canceled because George Lucas knew about the upcoming buyout of Disney 
and they probably canceled both 1313 and the Darth Maul game because it would have an M rating and they don't want that shit. The rest of 2013, there's nothing but mobile games in the Old Republic DLC, so fuck all that. 2014, nothing but a metric fuck ton of mobile games in the Old Republic DLC. 2015, nothing but mobile games in the Old Republic DLC and a disappointing revival of a beloved classic. 2016, nothing but Legos. 2017, a disappointing revival of a beloved classic. 2018, so far nothing. And that's it. So let's see how well you did. Can you spot any trends in this timeline? Did anything weird go on at any point in time? Probably around 2012? Now the obvious thing to say is, uh, Disney killed Star Wars games. But honestly, it's a combination of factors, at least I believe so. Gaming's been shifting towards microtransactions, mobile games, and indie games for a while. And then there's the occasional AAA blow your load title from a major producer. But companies realize the load blowers don't really get the numbers they want anymore, considering they can look at mobile games, see that microtransactions bring in so much money, so they have to bring that business model into their AAA games. We started seeing it with Battlefront, we really saw it in Battlefront 2. And they don't want to take any chances with some kind of, you know, in, not an indie game, not a major title, but like these smaller games, you know, the Jedi Knight games, Rogue Squadron. They were taking chances with a lot of types of games and they just cut that out completely. So we don't see little cool side games anymore. It's gotta be the big lore blowers with microtransactions or mobile games. Hell, I won't even say I want a new Jedi Knight game, even though it's like my favorite fucking series ever, because the chances of it getting screwed over by microtransactions and casual crap mechanics is so high that I wouldn't even want to buy it. So there's two Star Wars games in the works, one by Respawn and one that was previously by Visceral, but now by EA Vancouver. And the Respawn CEO revealed at E3 that they're working on a Jedi game that takes place between episodes three and four called Jedi Fallen Order. So the Star Wars name is Jedi Fallen Order. Woo! So Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order. Yeah, so it kind of gives you some idea that you'll be playing a Jedi. So does that mean I get to like hold a lightsaber? Yes. <laughs> it takes place during the dark times, trying to be a little vague here, but when the Jedis are being hunted, so it's going to be spectacular. As a studio, our promise to gamers is ultimately gameplay first. We all demand that the game has these huge wow moments. So for all the, like, the hardcore nerds out there who want to know like, where in the timeline, like, what, between which episodes is it? Between three and four. Okay. All right. Between three and four. That sounds like a nice time. Sounds like a nice time. Sounds like a nice time. Any other tidbits? No. It's not a nice... It's a dark time. It's a dark time. Bad time. Does that mean this could just be all... Dark and serious. It's amazing. <laughs> and judging from the way he talks about it, it's probably about playing as Darth Vader as their new fast badass Vader, like at the end of Rogue One. It's amazing. Because they know that that clip on YouTube got a bazillion views, so they're just like, oh shit, that means we, uh, we gotta make a video game just about this. But, you know, hey, maybe it'll be a goddamn new Jedi Knight game that they're gonna fuck up. God damn it. The Untitled Visceral game. This one was rumored to be like an Uncharted type Star Wars game. The people who were leading it also directed the Uncharted series, but Visceral was laid off completely and replaced by EA Vancouver, which is not the first time that they have just dicked over a developer for developing a game. Uh, that's what happened to the Darth Maul game. That was being developed by Redfly Studios, and they were like 20% done with the Darth Maul game when George Lucas told them that they needed to make Darth Maul play buddy cop with this Talon chick, a character who did not exist in the lore for another 160 years, but George Lucas told them to make it happen, and Redfly says, oh, that doesn't make sense. Then George Lucas canceled it like a fat kid on the playground who didn't get what he wanted. One of the craziest parts was nobody really knew what was going on. Like they knew they were making a game with LucasArts about Darth Maul. They didn't have a script. They didn't have any writers working with them. They just got like a title, a Battle that? of the Sith Lords. So they were like, well, maybe it's going to be Darth Maul going against someone else. So that's where they started thinking, well, maybe we'll be creating it. Maybe we will be guiding this ship. And so they started thinking about doing an origin story tale 
you know, these anonymous sources I talked to seem to think that it was canceled just because George Lucas had to ice all the projects that were in the works for the Disney merger. Well, that can't be true because there was an AMA a couple years ago on Reddit where the developer said that Darth Darth Lucas, that George Lucas did request Darth Talon to be worked into the timeline. So then Redfly decided that the main character wasn't going to be Darth Maul, but it was going to be an heir to Darth Maul just to appease George Lucas. And then he confirms that the Disney buyout did cause the cancellation of both this game and 1313. The mature rated Boba Fett game revealed at E3 2012 was canceled in 2013 because Disney. Now this game was being developed internally by LucasArts in coordination with Industrial Light and Magic who worked on the movies, Lucasfilm Animation, and Skywalker Sound. But then they canceled it, laying off all LucasArts employees except for a skeleton crew who was just there to meet the basic requirements to retain their license. And they probably canceled it because they don't want a mature game in their Marvel Star Wars universe something shit. They probably had some ideas for the way they want to fuck up Boba Fett more, but it didn't line up with what they wanted to do, so maybe they scrapped it. Or maybe it was something else entirely. Who knows? Also, to quickly touch on Battlefront 2, apparently they are changing the progression system, like they said at E3. They're gonna add cosmetics, and they're adding some Clone Wars heroes. But for me, that ship is fucking sailed with that game. So that's a sad state of Star Wars video games in 2018, the year of our Lord Anno Da Vinci. All right, that's it. If you liked the video, uh, be that YouTube guy or girl and share it with your friends and make them watch it. I don't give a fuck if you subscribe. Mm -hmm.